The gas crisis between Russia and Ukraine seems to have passed the people of Bratislava by. Even if Slovakia's government was forced to declare a state of energy emergency and impose restrictions on industry. Households, hospitals and schools were all spared. Unlike Bulgaria, most Slovaks survived the gas crisis in relative warmth. I wasn't afraid. We've already had such problems in the past. I live in a house and wanted to buy heating oil, but in the end I didn't do it. Of course I was concerned. I feared that the problem would get worse. No, I wasn't worried. I live in a house which we can heat by other means. But to understand the true extent of this crisis, one needs to go to the northwest of Slovakia. 200 kilometers from the capital. At the foot of the Malafatra mountains is the giant plant of Korean car maker Kia. Built in 2004, it employs 2,700 people in the region, pumping out some 700 cars a day. In recent years, Kia has become a driving force behind Slovakia's economy. At the start of January, however, the car maker was hit hard by the cut in Russia's gas by Ukraine. The suspension of supplies forced Slovakia's government to impose an indefinite freeze on more than 1,000 companies, a major blow to the constructor. They were changing their positions every day, within the day, every hour. So this was really bad for us, even to communicate, for example, with employees, to plan the production, etc., etc. If, for example, we knew before that we will stop the production for seven or days, then we would do some measures inside the factory to protect technologies. Kia was forced to halt production. Around 90% of its workforce were sent home on 60% pay, with the plant lying idle for a week. Forced to pay workers without production, the shutdown couldn't have come at a worse time for the car maker. Its sales already hit by the global economic crisis. We had to spend costs for our labor. Basically, we had to pay our employees even they were at home. Uh, we have to maintain the technologies, etc. So it created a lot of costs to us. On the night of the 5th and 6th of January, Slovakia saw a 70% drop in gas supply. With reserves limited to 10 days, its government appealed to the Czech Republic, France and Germany for aid. For the first time in its history, gas arrived in Slovakia from the west. But Bratislava estimates the crisis has cost Slovakia's economy more than 1 billion euros, around 1.5% of its GDP. In Brussels, the unfolding crisis was followed closely. Many MEPs find it unacceptable that Europe's citizens should be made to pay and think a better energy network is needed. I read in a Russian, an article in a Russian newspaper where the uh, journalist said that the biggest winner of this conflict is the European Commission. Not Russia, not Ukraine, but the European Commission. Because this will be given an enormous boost to the ambition of, of the European Commission to have a common energy policy uh, where we uh, 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 have the right links in the, uh, uh, between the countries for, uh, in case of, of urgency, of, of problems, both electricity and gas. And uh, I think this parliament will fully support new initiatives that also break the resistance of some member states uh, 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 who want to keep control of their, uh, their own systems. Solidarity, but diversification of energy sources, argues Anne Laperousse. In a report on the bloc's future energy security, she wants to put in place a code of good conduct among EU firms to lessen the risk of disruption to energy supplies. We saw that if one member state is affected, the entire EU is affected. So we need solidarity, pan-European networks. But to improve our sources of energy, we must also find other sources which are in the EU. We must use what one could call traditional sources, wind, marine energy, solar and geothermal. We have this potential.
but this may not be enough to restore confidence in Ukraine as a reliable transit route. Despite stressing relations with Kiev and Moscow remain amicable, Slovakia's EU representative says confidence has waned. We would be a little bit more carefully reading through all the future treaties which will be signed between EU and Ukraine and Russia and we would insist that uh, in these treaties there will be very clear paragraphs on the obligations on supplier and transitor of uh, oil and gas into the European Union. The crisis also set Bratislava and Brussels on a collision course. On the 10th of January, Slovakia's government announced the possible reopening of the Benitsi nuclear reactor. Closed a few days prior to Slovakia's entry into the EU, Bratislava claimed it was the only way to avoid power blackouts, a move rejected as unacceptable by Brussels. Nuclear expert Vladimir Slugan, however, sympathizes with Slovakia's position. The system was not stable enough. Therefore, the experts thought it will be perhaps useful to be ready for special emergency case to have a little bit more overcapacity in electric because in the case that will be not any gas for the heating, the electricity consumption will increase. Not so claims Claude Termes. The Green MEP claims Slovakia produces almost none of its electric energy from gas and has large capacity to import electricity. He condemns Slovakia's threat to reopen the nuclear reactor as a political move to hide the real causes behind the crisis. The problem of Slovakia uh, was not at all in the sector of electricity. Slovakia's problem had nothing to do with the electricity sector. The problem was that for 10 years they planned a gas pipeline linking them to Austria. But it's not been built. There are 30 meters of pipeline missing. I find this astonishing. There's a Prime Minister who's not done his homework and decides to launch the Bernice plant as a diversion. Slovakia has made massive faults in managing this crisis. Away from the debate, Bratislava still sleeps easy. But the EU will hope its government has learned lessons from the recent gas crisis. Energy security remains a priority issue for the bloc and will be part of its discussions at a summit in March.